so dear students today i am going to discuss a very important and significant poem of ted hughes entitled october dawn now you have uh, already studied the poems two poems we've already studied one is uh the thought fox and the other is hawk roosting and you've already seen how animal imagery has been used by the poet by ted hughes in these poems hughes is a great uh, animal poet you all know in hawk roosting you have seen the uh, image of an of a hawk but you uh, have seen how theme of violence has been uh, discussed by the poet in this poem the thought fox, fox is a different poem in the sense that it deals with the theme of creativity it is a poem about a poem coming to this third poem which is prescribed in your course that is october dawn a very significant important poem discussing the nature published in 1957 in the collection the hawk in the rain in this poem you know uh, the poet discusses the approach of winter of ice of power this also you know reminds the poet of the past ice ages and how they changed and forged the terrain that is now our environment in this poem hughes returns once again to the theme of raw power of nature though man may think he has tamed nature it is an actual fact that is still nature has the power to control uh so this poem october dawn discusses the onset of winter onset of winter it anticipates the freezing cold uh he the, you know the poet uh, uses you know graphic imagery in this poem in order to make the points clear to us this poem can also be uh, categorized as an apocalyptic poem now when you say apocalyptic it means forecasting the ultimate destiny of the world or you can say relating to the total destruction of mankind so you can relate this poem to apocalyptic you know poem when you look at the structure of the poem you'll find out that there are uh, you know 10 couplets the 10 couplets means 20 lines are there the lines are of you know uneven length and we have enjambed 
line endings and the enjambed line endings create a smooth flow now when i use the word en you know enjambed lines or enjambment as i told you in my uh, you know other discussion the enjambment means the continuation of a sentence from one verse line to the next without a punctuated pause in other words reading must continue from one line to the next uninterrupted just for the flow of thought to be preserved and make sense so we have the couplets ten couplets and the thought of say the second line flows to the third line without the punctuation mark and that is why you say that the lines are enjambed coming to the poem now october is marigold and yet a glass half full of wine left out to the dark heaven all night by dawn has dreamed a premonition of ice across its eye as if the ice age had begun its heave <sighs> when you read the poem you find out that the voice is of an omniscient narrator and he can be the poet the speaker sees ice formed on a glass of wine which is left outside this is actually the scene of you know a, a celebration of feast in the lawn and the speaker sees ice formed on a glass of wine left outside and this prompts imaginative thoughts of past ice ages and so the world as we know it has you know begun its heave october is marigold marigold you can say rich in color or uh, you know yellow and orange when the leaves become yellow and orange they the dead leaves about to fall now or you can say you can also relate it to virgin uh, i mean mary and this is the month of october and very soon christmas will fall and christmas and virgin mary related and christmas means cold so october is marigold and it a glass half full of wine left out to the dark heaven all night a glass half full of wine was left out and by dawn has dreamed a premonition prophecy it saw a dream it was a prophecy of ice across its eye as if the ice age had begun its heave the ice age has started its throw actually since the celebration was going on in the lawn the lawn overtrodden overtrodden trodden by feet because so many people were celebrating the lawn overtrodden and is strewn from the night before and the whistling green shrubbery are doomed shrubbery a place where a lot of bushes are found are doomed meet their death ice has got its spare head into place spirit a person or a group that begins the attacks that is ice age is about to start and how does the winter season begin actually first you have uh, you know the 
cold waves then severe cold wave waves then the ice and all that so we have the description here that first a skin delicately here restraining a ripple from the air soon plate and river on pond and brook then tons of chain and massive locked whole rivers due to the ice then sound by sight will mammoth and saber tooth celebrate reunion while a fist of cold squeezes the fire at the core of the world with the two differences here one is mammoth other is saber tooth so mammoth we have actually the hyperbole use of hyperbole here now mammoth is you know large elephant like beast of the primitive time and saber is you know tiger like beast with large teeth belonging to the prehistoric time so when the poet describes the cold season the ice is he says that i think mammoth and saber will start reunion while a fist of cold is squeezes means extinguish the fire at the core of the world it is believed that there is a fire at the core of the earth so this is also going to extinguish not only that it squeezes the fire at the core of the heart and now it is about to start the season is about to start squeezes the fire at the core of the heart implicitly the poem is a prophecy of the end of the world when coldness of the heart kills the affection of the mankind so what you find here is that how beautifully the poet has described you know uh, in the poem Uh, you know he anticipates the freezing cold and he gives you know he has given the graphic imagery to explain the 